Hi, this is Tina from Haiku. Today, we'll be using states and actions to dynamically create instances of an element on stage, depending on where our users click. If you're getting started with states and actions, this video will be a quick refresher. Let's start by showing you what I mean. This will be our final result. Wherever the user clicks, a red dot will appear on our character's body. A big shout out to Jason W who came up with this idea and who's always helping us improve Haiku by sending us feedback. This is a great idea for any health related apps. And of course, the core logic behind this behavior can be used in multiple other scenarios. If you feel like taking this project for a spin, I'll leave the link to the forkable project down below. Let's get started. We'll be working on a brand new Haiku project. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a sketch document from the library panel. Let's just delete this. As you can see, I already created the illustration we'll be using on today's tutorial. I'm simply going to select, copy and paste our illustration on the new sketch document we created for our project like so. Now I'm going to mark our character and the red dot you can see here as exportable as you normally would in Sketch. You can see that after saving in Sketch, the slices are ready to be used in Haiku. Let's quickly adjust the stage size so that our character can fit in. I'll set it to 550 by 655 pixels. I'm going to drag and drop our slices onto the stage and I'm going to change the stage's background color so that our character has better contrast and also to complete our design. You can do this by clicking on the plus icon below main on the timeline. From the options available, I'm going to click on background color and paste the hex value of the color I want to use in the new input that was created. Great! The next thing we need to do is create a set of variables that we can later change with user interactions. In Haiku, we can set those variables in the form of states. To access the states panel, you only need to click on this button here and then on the plus sign up top to create a new state. We'll enter a name and a value for each of our variables. We'll be needing three variables for this particular use case. One to modify the position X of our red dot, another one to modify the position Y of our dot, and the last one to know when a user clicks. So we'll name our first variable xPulse, and we'll give it a zero value. Our second variable will be called yPulse, and it will have the same value as before. Finally, our third variable will be called hasClicked, and its value will be false. As you can see, you can use dates for Boolean operations as well. That's done, so now we're going to put our states to good use. We'll take x pulse and y pulse states and set them as the value for the position x and position y properties of our red dot. Remember you need to use the equal sign to make this work, since it was designed to resemble how functions work in Excel or Google spreadsheets. What this will do is allow us to dynamically change those values from user interactions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll use the last state called has clicked on the opacity property of our red dot, but with a twist. Instead of simply typing it in like we did before, we'll use an expression to tell Haiku how to manage the opacity depending if the user has clicked or not. For those non-JS folks out there, we're basically saying, is this state true? If so, assign a 1 value to this input. If not, assign a zero value. Not so scary now that we've translated it to human, right? If you want to learn more about expressions and summonables, please check out the links to the docs that I'll leave down below. That's it. We have all of our states playing in the field. Now we need to use actions to change the values of our states whenever the user clicks. To do that, we need to click on the lightning icon below our character. In the actions panel, we need to select click as the user interaction, since that's what we want our animation to respond to. I'm going to be pasting the bit of code we need, which I prepared beforehand. 
what this code is doing is telling Haiku that whenever a user clicks on this element, our character, it needs to first change the value of our has clicked state from false to true. This will in turn change the opacity value where this state is in play from zero, the user hasn't clicked, to one, the user has clicked. In short, we'll be making our red dot appear on the screen. It is also telling Haiku to modify the position X and position Y values, which are affected by our X pos and Y pos states, to the X and Y coordinates that the user clicks on. We'll hit done and let's head into preview mode to see how it's all looking. Just as we expected, our red dot appears whenever and wherever we click on our character. It's important to note that if we click outside the character, nothing happens because we told Haiku to react to clicks that happen only on our character. Now, we could end this here, but let's take it one step forward. We're going to give a beacon-like effect to our red dot to make it more attractive. For this, we'll be creating a component. First, we're going to select our red dot, right-click it and select Create Component. We'll give our component a name and then you'll see that a new tab appears up top. Next, we need to reassign our states to our component. We'll enter the necessary states in the opacity and in the position X and Y properties. There. Now, let's work our component. I'm going to make the stage here a bit bigger. I'll give it a 45 by 45 size. On frame zero, I will center our dot using the align panel. Now, I'll duplicate our dot using alt and drag and center that one too. I'll select the top dot and give it opacity zero so that we can see the changes we'll be making on the dot below. We'll revert this opacity back to one when we finish. On the second dot, on frame zero, I will set opacity to one and scale X and Y to 0.1. On frame 40, I will set opacity to 0 and scale X and Y to 1.7. I'll give all constant bodies an easing curve. In this case, I'll use ease in out sign. Now we can give the top dot opacity 1 again. Let's preview this. Great! Now back to main, let's preview the whole thing. Awesome, we achieved the effect we were going for. And that's it. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Also, if you have any ideas for tutorials you'd like to see, please shoot us a line or two to our Slack community or to contact at haiku.ai. I'll leave both links in the description box. I'll see you next time.